Good afternoon, good evening, everybody. It's David Schlotthauer here in the home weather office with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Thursday, October the 10th, 2024. So here's a look at the North Atlantic satellite imagery wide here from cyclonicwx.com. There's a link in the description below this video. We did have almost major Hurricane Leslie out here as Milton was cutting across central Florida yesterday. So almost had two major hurricanes going on at the same time. But nonetheless, now Leslie really degrading pretty quickly as we have northerly shear on top of the system. And here is Milton, what is left. Remnants of Milton as it is now post-tropical as it continues to move generally eastward. And right now, you might be surprised to not see any clouds at all this afternoon in portions of Florida. Actually, mostly cloudy there, my bad. But areas are seeing plenty of sunshine. And that's good news for the speedy recovery of all the efforts in the wake of Hurricane Milton, which was quite devastating yesterday afternoon in through much of the day. Here's a closer zoomed in view on post-tropical cyclone Milton here for this evening across Florida. You can see winds are coming in out of the northerly direction, so winds are beginning to quickly settle down as high pressure begins to filter on in and you start getting more northeasterly flow. But still, this system is very strong for shipping interest, especially on this northwestern side where we do have what appears to be a steam jet where we have that thermal gradient. And you can see it right here wrapping all the way around very quickly where we are still getting near hurricane force winds. Not officially a hurricane now and winds are about 70 miles an hour, but just keep that in mind if you're out here boating or doing anything over the Atlantic, just keep that in mind. Winds are very, very strong on that northwestern quadrant as we are seeing this develop frontal futures. A cold front here, we have a warm front here to the north, and we have the area of low pressure and that steam jet with that cooler, drier air wrapping all the way around the cyclone. Looking at this from the National Hurricane Center, seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook, you can see there is Milton right there, winds 70 miles an hour. When we click on the advisory really quickly, you can see it's going to be generally moving eastward, south of Bermuda. Keep in mind, this is still tropical storm force winds right here. So this is a pretty large system. So even so, this does weaken gradually. I would still not be surprised if Bermuda does get some post-tropical cyclone-like winds with winds of about 35 to about 40 miles an hour as this begins to slowly spin down over the western and north central portion of the Atlantic and it becomes a tropical depression by 2 a.m. on Sunday. Now it's a good reminder that even so the system has departed and we are starting to see blue skies out there in some areas and the sun still shining before the sun sets. Just a good reminder there is a lot of power outages. There's a lot of damage that has been done especially in the Tampa area in Lakeland, Florida also Port St. Lucie with all those tornadoes that did happen yesterday. One of the worst tornado outbreaks in Florida state history. Never have seen that many tornado warnings. And we had, I think, over 30 or 40 tornado reports just out of that. So a big, big disaster um, that had shaped up yesterday across Florida. And all my hearts and thoughts are those out here dealing with no electricity. And some counties like Highlands County still has pretty much the whole county is still without power right now. 65,000 people are tracked here and 62,000 are without power, which adds up here when you put all the counties together. There is still almost 3 million people without power as of this afternoon. So again, you could be without power, especially in the Hillsborough County and Mantee County. You could be without power for the next possibly week or so uh, in Sarasota County down here where the eye went through. You might be without power for another week or two. Doesn't surprise me. And Pinellas County still um, up to all, still 405,000 people are without power. That's quite a bit of people in that county right now dealing with no lights at the moment. So now that we talked about post-tropical cyclone Milton as it is now milling eastward across the eastern Atlantic, 
What is going to be next after Milton? Well, this look at the GFS model. This is the average precipitation rate forecast. So anything in green here is areas of light to moderate rainfall and areas where there's no rain, of course. Usually it's just clouds and sunny skies. So going forward here on the GFS model, there is a little bit an area that we are going to need to watch out here in the northwestern Caribbean. Nothing too concerning right now. I'm not seeing anything in the way of significant tropical development. Some people are already jumping the gun and seeing that, oh, this is going to become our next hurricane. Some people are on YouTube are already pre-naming this to become Nadine. I would not even dare to prename this or even predict a hurricane at this moment. We don't need another hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. But nonetheless, we are going to watch this. And over the next three days, we are seeing enhanced convection here. Now, I want to make it clear that this led to problems with Milton. We had a lot of convection over here. We had a circulation at the surface and all that deep convection was able to concentrate and actually develop a closed surface flow pretty quickly and it was able to become one of the strongest hurricanes actually the second or the third strongest hurricane in the gulf of mexico behind rita and uh, wilma and almost actually as strong as actually stronger than hurricane andrew with its surface winds and both surface pressure so just putting that into perspective and so with any deep convection like this, models don't have a good handle on it until it could be too late. And what we have here is just a broad area of low pressure. But what ends up happening here by day seven is we have a broad circulation, not really a compact one where it can spin up very quickly. This is good because broader systems take much longer to spin up and become better organized and actually able to develop an inner, inner core structure. In this case, this is broad, and so it's not in no hurry to really get its act together until later on in the period where it may try to consolidate a little faster. Now, I want to make it clear here, there is a lot of differences between each run on the GFS. If we look back at the previous run, the system was not very compact and not well developed. Somewhat organized with some banding features and some enhanced rainfall. If we go back to the previous frame, not really much at all. And then if we go back another one uh, from yesterday's 18Z run, we had a more compact system down here where we had a 997 millibar system. We go back again, it's way down here. So this is moving all around right now. And I would not um, call it to become anything significant right now. And the 18Z run is now just beginning to render. So we won't be providing you that right now. But just a heads up that we will need to watch this and we will see if the NHC does anything with it in the coming days if they do have a highlighted area. But regardless of development, these systems are prone to bringing lots of heavy rainfall and flood concerns to the Yucatan, to Cuba, to say Honduras down here, as well as Central America, including for Jamaica and Western Cuba. But right now, there is no set in stone if a tropical storm or any sort of name storm will develop. And I would really use caution when watching other YouTube channels because they are jumping the gun and saying that this is going to become our next hurricane or our next major hurricane. It is way too soon to tell right now what this is going to do. I would not trust one model run. And for an example, if we looked really far out right here, this would probably be the worst case you could even do to forecast. You can see what makes a difference. One run has this, one run has that, and this is moving all over the place on each of the model runs of the GFS, which means we have very little to no confidence in this forecast this far out but anyways before i do close out the video i wanted to make a couple announcements first of all thank you all for donating almost fifteen hundred dollars in yesterday's live stream that money is going to be going to samaritan's purse so i do appreciate all the support all the donations i could not have done it without all of you so i want to thank you all for supporting the channel for subscribing to the channel as well because again, I do enjoy doing this and I cannot wait for what is to come by late October or early November when we may have more development on the way. Maybe, like I said here, we may have to watch this system and we'll be providing more updates if needed. 
But anyways, uh, thank you all for watching this video. If you did like the content, if you did find this video very helpful, please don't forget to subscribe right now. If you did enjoy the video, hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media. And I'll be back with you more soon with more updates on the tropics. Thank you guys for watching.